Hi, everybody. It's me, Jessica, your health fitness program manager from McLean. And I'm here today to guide you through our core and stretch class. We're going to get started sitting down on the floor for a couple of minutes of breath and meditation. You don't have to, but you might want to bring a block to the party. That's the only prop I'm recommending for today. Grab your beverage. Grab that block or a towel if that's what you're using. Let's meet on the floor. Hopefully, you've gathered the things that you need. Me too. Okay, well, we're making our way down onto the mat. If you want to sit in kneeling, you can sit in kneeling. If you want to sit cross-legged, if you want to sit with your legs out nice and wide, do what feels right. This is your practice. If you find that you sat down on the floor cross-legged and your knees uh, are above your hips though, think about sitting up on your block or your rolled up towel. It's gonna help you to already create some extra opening of your hips as they slope down towards the floor. Find a place to relax your hands. I like to bend my elbows, take a big lift of the chest and hands palms come a little closer to the hip flexor. And we'll spend one more minute right here just breathing. So get a neutral chin to your chest the best you can. Come into the idea of stacking your head over your heart, over your hip. Feel some grounding through your sits bone. Take the rest of this minute to really focus on your breath, the quality of your inhale and exhale, making sure that you're breathing all the way down to the bottom of your diaphragm and moving away from uh, the practice of stressful breathing when we just breathe into the top of our chest. So one more nice big inhale, maybe even a lift of the heart, a lengthening of the spine. And on your exhale, you can start to walk your hands in front of you. Shift onto your knees. Keep them as wide as you want. We're going to send hips back towards heels. Take a couple breaths in child's pose. Find what feels good for your body today. Perhaps you want an extra stretch in your shoulders. You have your hands, palms extended all the way in front of you. You can even be the most active by pressing the pads of your fingers into the floor and creating spider spooky hands uh, with your palms. And if that feels too much on your shoulders or in your lats, just simply bend your elbows. Maybe walk your elbows a little closer towards your knees or the most relaxing would be uh, palms facing up towards the ceiling with your fingers pointing down towards the bottom of the mat. So just find what is right for your practice today. We'll spend one more minute right here. With each exhale, explore how much closer you might be able to sink your glutes towards your heels, creating a nice length and stretching your back. The last two breaths, focus on expanding the back side ribs.
When you finish that second breath, uh, bring your hands palms back underneath of your chest shoulders. Go ahead. Oh, I lied. Don't bring them underneath of your chest and shoulders. Walk them out in front of you. Shift your weight forward. We're going to come into Sphinx. A nice deeper stretch into our low backs. So elbows ideally are underneath of your armpits. You can press the tops of the feet into the floor, getting your kneecaps to lift up. For a little extra engagement here, lifting your chest, chin neutral to the floor, Eye gazes forward. If this is too much for you, explore the idea of walking your hands out a little bit further while still trying to take this proud lift of your chest. We'll take two more breaths here. And on your exhale, release yourself all the way back down towards the mat. Make a nice pillow with your hands. Place your forehead on your pillow. Bend your knees and windshield wipe your legs in opposite directions. I see. All right, next up, we're going to go for a nice little stretch of the neck. So if you're wearing glasses, you might want to take them off. Go ahead, turn your head, look towards the right side of the room, bringing your left temple to the floor. Maybe you can even get your left ear towards the floor. Can you bring your tips of your shoulders to touch down on the mat? So a little rounding through your upper back. Find one spot to relax your eyes or keep them closed. Continuing those big breaths into the back side of the body. And on your next inhale, lift your head up and turn and face the opposite direction. Getting that opposite side neck stretch. So bringing your temple to the floor. Maybe you can roll your ear to the floor. If that's too much, that's okay. You can always maybe even bring your nose to the mat to take out a little bit of the neck stretch. And then as much rounding through your shoulders as feels good. I find it helps to take a generous bend of the elbows and like a limp rag doll, just relaxing on the floor. Big breath, still sent into the mid-upper back. Just about two more breaths. Great. Next, we're going to come into a quad stretch. So you can either just stretch your chin forward for an extra stretch of the neck. Or bring your left hand back to the floor, just like we did uh, for that windshield wipe when you made half of a pillow. And then go ahead and bend your right leg. Reach back and grab hold of your right foot. Maybe you're grabbing it by the pinky toe side. Maybe you're grabbing it by the big toe side. Totally up to you. But once you've got hold, take a nice squeeze of your glute. Allow your knee your quad to lift up off the floor you'll feel a bigger stretch there you can take as much of a lift of your chest as you might want as well for a little heart opening a little shoulder strut we've got a couple breaths left here try not to let your knee go out too much to the side so uh, knee in line with your shoulder still one more big inhale and exhale, release, relax your head down, release your right foot, bring your right hand forward underneath of your forehead, go ahead, bend your left knee, and then open your hand back, grab hold of your foot. Now, I prefer to hold on right here by the baby toe side. The next thing that happens is squeeze your glutes, press your hips down towards the floor, bring that left knee back in line with your hip. And on your inhale, see if you can press your hip flexor into the floor. Take a little extra stretch of the knee. So you're stretching your knee towards the bottom of the mat. You're stretching your knee a little up and back towards the ceiling for a deeper stretch into that quad. Might even feel a little something, something happening in the hip flexor itself. Like it might feel uncomfortable with your hip bone uh, pressing into the floor. Take one more big inhale. 
And on your exhale, relax the feet back down towards the floor. Take three breaths right here in your alligator pose. Next up, we're going to get into a little bit of core work. We've got 10 different moves. We're going to do each of them for 40 seconds work, 20 seconds of rest. If you don't want to fully take those 20 seconds of rest, keep the last move going while I explain to you what's coming up. That way you can get a slightly longer interval. So our first move of the day is going to be a plank. We do have a forearm plank coming up a little bit later. So perhaps you challenge yourself to a straight arm plank. Can you work to find stillness? Let's find out. Hands, palms underneath of chest shoulders. You can press up onto your knees and do this from a check mark. You can press up onto your toes. We start in three, two, one. <laughs> Begin. Awesome. So either right here uh, in a check mark, make sure you're not rounding through your shoulders. So pulling your chest forward, engaging through your back, eye gaze is gently forward of your fingers. If you're on your toes, you don't have hips up towards the ceiling. Down dog is coming up next. So make sure you have shoulders shifted forward on top of hands, palms, and then the best you can, your heels are stacked on top of the balls of your feet. You can always open your feet a little bit wider for a little bit more balance. We've got five more seconds here, or you can keep going while I talk through the next move. Option to take a break. Next move is gonna be pressing up into down dog, reaching back, trying to tap an ankle, shifting yourself forward, and then pressing back into down dog and reaching towards the opposite side. I'm gonna tuck my shirt in. You know I love to tuck my shirt in. We started in three, two, right now. Awesome. So from that plank, Hips up towards the ceiling, get that nice separation of the glutes. You can move as quickly or as slowly as you want. So if you want to take a couple extra seconds, just enjoying that down dog and the big stretch. Yeah, okay, I forgot what was happening here. And then press back into down dog and reach towards the opposite ankle. Now, depending what your flexibility is like, it might be really easy to reach towards one ankle. And the other side, maybe you're just reaching towards your knee. Totally okay. Do what you can with your body today. Three, two, one, or keep working through. Next up, we're going to come on down to the floor. We've got a Superman with our hands at our forehead. So we're back into that alligator position like we started with. You're going to press the tops of the knees into the floor. Sorry, press the tops of the feet into the floor. Squeeze your glutes, and we're just going to lift the upper body. Ooh, and lower the upper body. Let's get started. I like to have my feet a little closer together. I like to think that tighter is lighter. So squeezing through the center line, squeezing my legs together, squeezing my heels together. And you're really pressing that pelvis towards the mat. So just like we practice in that quad stretch of getting your pubic mound, that area down towards the floor you're keeping it there now and you're using your exhale while staying engaged in your lower legs to find a lift yay all right the next move is going to be our forearm plank to dart so you're going to bring your elbows underneath of your shoulders just like we practice in sphinx you're going to press yourself up into a forearm plank you're going to lower yourself down reach your hands back Exhale, lift everything up, and then bring hands back forward. Come into your forearm plank. Let's get started. Forearm plank, release yourself down. Reach your hands back. Exhale, lift up into your dart. So we're getting that Superman, and we're getting a plank. We're mixing up two of the moves that we already did. That's This is the only time I'm going to make you do that uh, with these planks. So last of the forearm straight arm planks. You know, it sounded so ominous. There's no real side planks. We do have hip work coming up though. And take a break. All right, hip work comes up right now. So you're gonna roll over onto your side, relax your head down on the floor. 
The legs are nice and straight, hand by your chest. You're going to lift your top leg up, not too high, because then we're going to lift the lower leg up to try and meet it and slowly lower down. Ready? Let's do it. So lift yourself up. And I am on the side of my body the same way that if I said, okay, we're going to roll over and come into a spine twist the way you try to stack your hips. So I'm not back here on my glutes and I'm not rolled all the way forward. It might be a little bit uncomfortable pressing that hip bone into the floor, but you can do it. You got it. Just a couple seconds left, a couple more breaths, and we're going to stay on this side for the next move that's coming up. So we're working our hips right now. Take a break, but you all probably also notice we're getting a little bit into the obliques. So next up, we're going to go for an elbow to knee crunch. You can stay low here on the floor, or you can challenge yourself to lift yourself up. Maybe you come into a side plank. Maybe you just stay in a modified side plank. Elbow to knee touch. Reach all the way out. Here we go. We're going to press up into a side plank, even with that bottom leg down on the Oh, my hip flexor is so tired. So I'm just going at the pace that's right for me, working to bring the elbow to knee and knee together and then extend all the way back out. I think I need to lower myself down just to be smart for my body today because remember, every day is different. And it depends on what you did with your body yesterday. How did you sleep? How are you eating? What other movements have you gotten? No one else is training the exact same way as you. So bring the challenge that works for you. Awesome. We're going to roll over to the opposite side and get those same two moves. Opposite side, coming into our last couple of exercises. Starting off with that hip work. So lower yourself all the way down. Get ready. Top leg, lower leg is going to meet it. Lift your top leg. Lift your lower leg to meet it. Slowly lower down. Top leg, lower leg meets it, slowly lower down. They don't have to come all the way together. You're just working a little bit of that inner thigh of your lower leg as well. So we're getting some hip work. We're getting some inner thigh work. I'm a big fan. I like to throw this one in every once in a while, but if you haven't ever tried it before, I know it's challenging. That's what we're here for. We're here to create challenge so we can see change. Yay. All right. Next up, we've got that elbow to knee, side lying crunch. All right. I'm going to bring my elbow of the other arm to the floor because I'm going to try it in this modified side plank. Ready? Here we go. So elbow to knee crunch and then big extension. Getting a little side body crunch here. So we're working into our obliques. Remember, if you don't want to stay lifted, you can always bring that hip down towards the floor. We're still going to be working that ab using your exhale to draw your elbow up. Find that squeeze and crunch. So we're decreasing the space between the lower rib and the hip just a little bit here. For three, two, one. Awesome. Next up is a Russian twist. Okay, so you have some options for your Russian twist. Easier version is going to be with your feet on the floor, twisting from side to side. Slightly harder is going to be straight legs. I'm going to encourage you halfway through to go to a harder version, whether that be straighter legs. Let's get started. So maybe you're starting with your feet on the floor. You're just twisting side to side. I want you to really try and touch the mat. Or you're right here with your feet in boat pose. Now, if you had your feet on the floor, in five seconds, you're going to try and come into boat pose, even if it's just one leg at a time. And if you were in boat pose, try to straighten your leg out. Even if you just straighten one leg at a time, and then you'll straighten the other leg. We're down to our last 10 seconds. So if you're just doing one at a time, woo, find that switch right now. Keep your chest lifted. Keep that long spine. Ah, lower yourself all the way down to the floor. We got one move left. 
Four abs, send your legs up towards the ceiling. Ceiling, find as straight of a leg as you can. We're gonna tap up towards our toes, lower down, and then either knees bent, tap towards the floor, or straight legs. Here we go. So reach up towards your toes, and then you can either tap your heels towards the floor, or you can get your straight legs towards the floor. So we're getting shoulders up off of the mat. That's the challenge. We're getting an upper body focus move, and then we're getting a lower body focus move. I like to think about pressing heels towards the floor as opposed to just tapping your toe down if you have a knee bent, because I think it engages a little bit more through the core. Try them both. Ah, oh, we made it. Go ahead, release your feet down to the mat, take a couple of breaths. Let's stretch into those hips. All right, we're gonna sit ourselves up. So make your way into a seated position and then separate your feet. We're gonna drop our knees to the side. So feet a little bit wider than shoulder width distance apart. Drop your knees to the side. We find ourselves in deer pose, but we don't wanna just let this back leg glute fly in the middle of nowhere. So our two options are to A, whoo, work towards sitting it down. You're gonna get a big stretch uh, in the outer hip. Is that too much for you? Then go ahead, fold this leg in, Bring the stretch a little bit more towards the quad, but let's take the next couple of breaths to really just work towards sitting your back leg down. So big lift of your chest, your hands can always be behind you if you need to, hands in front of you is gonna be for a little bit more uh, of an advanced balancer. Last two breaths here. Bring your hands behind you if they weren't there. We're going to send the knees up towards the ceiling. Bring the soles of the feet back towards the floor. Windshield wipe in each direction. And then drop your legs over to the other side. Remember, wait, this is both sides of the body are not the same. So one side might feel really easy to come into and one side might feel really hard. You have the same two options. You're going to use your exhales no matter what. Every exhale, work to sink this back sit bone to the floor. If you want the stretch on the outer hip, your feet are both going to stay at a 90 degree angle. You have the inner arch of the foot towards the floor. If that's too much for your outer hip, you're going to fold this leg in, place the top of the foot on the floor, and it turns into more of a stretch of the quad. Just like the other side, maybe your hands come behind you for that big lift of your chest and support. Maybe you're able to find that with your hands on your legs. Just breathe it out. Great work. Bring your hands behind you. Windshield wipe your legs one more time. And then go ahead, extend both legs out nice and wide, coming into dragonfly. So opening your heels as much as feels comfortable for you today. Ooh, pop, pop, pop. That's what I heard when that happened. Awesome. If you're feeling really tight, you might need to have your hands behind you. But also, you don't have to have your legs open all the way. So maybe your legs are just a little bit more narrow, but you're able to actually sit on your sit bones instead of pressing yourself up with the floor behind you. If you're not feeling enough of a stretch, you can hinge forward. I would demonstrate it, but I'm feeling enough of a stretch today. 
Once you've taken a hinge from your hips uh, with your straight spine, if you then want to round yourself down and forward once you're uh, forward of your sit bones, awesome. Otherwise, maybe you keep your fingers on the floor just to help you get that length. But even if fingers on the floor, they're just gently wrestling, resting there. Uh, try not to like muscle through it 100%. And for our last couple of breaths, go ahead, flex your toes back towards your face. Re-round through your sit bones, lift yourself up, create stillness. And then let's take a little bit of movement. So go ahead, windshield wipe your feet, even while you're out here, even in Dragonfly. Are you also making a delightful windsy face? <laughs> Feels like a lot. Feels like a lot. Great. Go ahead, bring your legs together. I'm going to swing my right leg all the way over to meet with the left and then roll over into tabletop. Hands, palms underneath of chest and shoulders. Uh, hips stacked on top of knees. Give yourself a couple cat cows, like three to five cat cows. Feel free to move slowly with your own breath, find what feels good. Maybe you shake and you shimmy a little or a lot. Maybe you look over your shoulder a bit, a couple more stretches uh, towards the outside of the hips and in the obliques, especially if you don't normally work them on your own. We had a couple moves today that did get into the side of the body. All right. From there, I want you to tuck your toes under, send your hips up towards the ceiling. Take a moment in your down dog of any sort. You can have your knees bent as much as you need to. So just pedal through one heel. Try to straighten one leg and then the other. Maybe you press all the way up onto your tippy toes and then work to sink your heels to the floor. Do some sort of paddling movement. And then go ahead, walk your hands to your feet or your feet to your hands. Stay in your dangle once you get your hands to your feet about either touching each other or hips width distance apart, hips not shoulders. On your next inhale, lift up into a half lift. Hands can come to your uh, thighs or your shins. Find length through the crown of your head. Really stretch your glutes towards the back of the wall. And on your exhale, sink down one more time into your forward fold or your dangle, you can take your middle and your peace finger and grab hold of your big toes and then elbows out towards the side as you gently pull yourself down and forward. Start to even shift some weight towards your toes as you lift your heels, relax your shoulders away from your ears. Look left and right. Ooh, shake your head, yes. Release any bind that you have in your feet. Bend your knees, coming into a chair pose. Hands can come to your heart. Or if you're feeling a little bit more open, stretch your arms up overhead. Shift the weight into your heels, though. Really try and stack your knees more on top of your ankles. Inhale, lift your chest once more. Exhale, sit your hips down and back. And inhale, stand yourself all the way up. Press through your heels, reach up towards the ceiling. Exhale, relax your arms down by your side. Stretch your fingers down towards the floor, equally ground through your feet. Push your hips forward, open your chest, hands, palms towards the front of the room. Inhale, bring your arms up overhead once more. Pull your belly in, exhale, rain or swan dive down to the floor. You can bend your knees if you need to. Inhale into a half lift. Exhale back down to your forward fold one more time. Take three breaths. Shift the weight forward to your toes. Relax shoulders from your ears. Lift your hips up one more time. And on your next inhale, Ground through your feet, bend your knees, slowly roll yourself up one vertebrae at a time. Once more, inhale your arms up overhead, palms face towards each other, look up towards the ceiling, squeeze your glutes, hips forward, lift your chest, maybe arms come back, a little gentle back bend. 
Inhale, arms come back up towards the ceiling. Exhale, relax your arms down by your side. Take two breaths in your stillness. Awesome. We did it, y'all. Thank you so much for coming to Core and Stretch. So great to be able to teach this class to you live again. I can't wait to see you on Friday for a whole new yin. Till then, have a wonderful rest of your day, everybody.